Nico is about to do something freaking crazy. Just drop the tape and dirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to drop a tape and dirt. One tape, please. One tape. I've heard that lipo batteries are really dangerous. So we have this really puffed up lipo battery. And it's a really old battery, it's been used a million times. A million times. <laughs> Slight exaggeration. Anyways, you're not supposed to use them when they get puffy. I figured, let's see what happens if I pierce it through the heart with an arrow. Where is the heart of a battery located? Oh, uh, right in the smack dab center. Battery is oh, wow. like the heart of your electronics. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know what it actually is. <laughs> Come on, Michael, what do you think is going to happen? I have no basis on what's going to happen. Nick, what do you think is going to happen? I think it's going to fucking explode. <laughs> Brand you're an engineer. Will it explode? No comment. Oh, it's going to fall down. Just fell off the tape. Because you watered the board. So it wouldn't light on fire. It's not falling down this time. <laughs> I'm hoping this is a little bit of a show. I'm hoping that we haven't enticed you with an exploding battery just to have it sit there. That totally makes sense, because isn't that a three cell battery? Yeah. Three, three burnings. That three far surpassed my expectations. <laughs> Holy crap, that was amazing. Yeah, we didn't want Ren to like, we wanted Ren to hype it up at the beginning to make it like the video seem all exciting, but he wouldn't do it, because he's like, I'm an engineering student and batteries don't explode. No, I, that was not the case. <laughs> Turns I, out, Ren's expectations were surpassed. Dude, look at the arrow. <laughs> dude. The thing is, when you charge it, all that electricity releases all at once. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. Oh, there's still an arrow in there! If I don't wear this hat, people won't know which channel I'm with. Turns out they weren't lying about lipo batteries. Look at that. Did it straight up explode? Yeah. <laughs> Close. It uh, you just shot out a jet of flame like this long. Oh, that's cool. Whoa. I yeah. wish I get, knew you were guys doing that. That'd, that'd be fun to watch. I guess you can watch the replay. Whoa! I got him! I got him! Oh, referee! One take. First try, I can do this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like that. Oh, first try. <laughs> One take, first try. First try. First try, first try. First try. Oh. Ah, that was a one take, that's crazy. I can't believe we did it, like, I can't believe we made it perfectly take. on the first take, that's first try. Much. One take, first try, pull it back here. Yep, and here we go. go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last day to get your very own Corridor Digital Hat. The reason we do them limited edition is because we actually have to make them to order. So we take the number of people that ordered them, we make that many hats. So if you want one, today is the day. I'm personally a big fan of the new yellow and black colors. There's on average about four to five people working in this studio. Nick and I can't always be there to film them. We have a great workshop designed for the builders, not the cameramen. Simply put, we need a top-down rig. I'm going to build the best moving top-down rig for this workshop. Top-down rig's only $224. That's minus the, the camera and minus light. Minus the camera and light. Here's the plan for the top-down rig that Spencer and I designed. First, we're going to mount brackets onto the walls. Then we string up two sets of wires across the room horizontally on both sides. That provides us lateral movement from left to right. The next step is to cut two boards that go on those cables. With one board on each side of the room, we attach them with four cables and four tensioners. These boards have four pulley wheels on the back of them so they can slide left to right on the cables. Next step is to cut and build the camera dolly that goes in the center of these four cables, which allow us to go bilaterally across the room in the way that we couldn't before. 
Spencer has built the entire top-down rig as a 3D model in 3ds Max. Functional, so we can have a better idea physically of what it's going to be virtually. See, this is the very unfun part. And I'm curious, there probably is a tool to do this, but I don't own it. So you're just hand screwing it for now? I have to. Stick thing in and rotate thing. One take, first try. <laughs> One take, first try. First try. <laughs> One try. <laughs> God dang it. Ren, you want something cool? What's that? We did this mixed reality video for Node. We've been doing it for a couple weeks now. Holy moly. You okay? Yeah. And the video that just came out today looks crazy. Yeah? Yeah. Like, as a visual effects guy, I think you'll really appreciate it. We figured out a way where you take a third controller that's tracked in 3D space and you put it on the camera, and that gives you a virtual camera that's doing the same thing your real life camera is doing. <laughs> so you take the footage from the virtual camera and you combine it with the footage from the real camera, it looks like the stuff you're filming in real life, as long as, as, as it's on a green screen, it looks like it's in that virtual space. So there's this game called Gorn, which is a fighting game. It works flawlessly with mixed reality. Like it has oh, perfect man. foreground layers. Dude, the key to this is having those foreground layers. Yeah. It keeps track of where the headset is in space and any models between the headset and the camera, it renders out as a separate layer. The part where Sam grabs Grabs two arms and just starts like pounding the ground with him. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> Look how crazy that looks. The tracking, like the foreground layers, the compositing, like it all works out so well. Like I'm in that space, just making blood triangles fly everywhere. We should do like an entire short film based yeah, on this. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking we should too. The visual effects side of me is like really excited about this. I really want to make a GIF of this because I think this will hit the front page of Reddit. I'll do it right when this vlog is posted and I'll put a link in the comments so you guys can go up with it and we can hit the front page of Reddit. <laughs> would you guys like a gift making tutorial? If you would, let us know in the comments below. And we will put one in one of our upcoming vlogs. And maybe we can actually do like a little gif film festival. <laughs> Where everybody like makes gifs of, I don't know, their favorite parts from a Sam and Nico video or something like that. There's already like a billion corridor digital gifs out there. But Sam and Nico channel needs a little bit of love. If you guys want to check out the full video, it's on Node. So head on over there to watch us live in the virtual realm. Isn't all the, the Big Bear weekend stuff going up soon? As yeah. Well? Like all the Nerf gang? Yeah, every, every Wednesday now going forward. Every, every, every Wednesday for the next... Two months. Yeah. Holy moly. As Biggie Small said, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> How's it fit? Fits in good. Fits good. We're ready to string our first layer. And then we need to cut some wood, the first set of wheels on, tension some more, and we'll be we'll be golden. Time to switch. What it does is that we have this little piece of aluminum here and a swedger closes that aluminum down on it so it doesn't move. Without really actually tightening the middle. Increase the tension of the walls. You're the ex-engineer. Is that more of an exponential pull or is it more of a... Like a linear pull? Yeah, like linear Linear pull. increase. Yeah. The crux of the issue okay. is that you need to be able to make this really, really tight so that this doesn't sag. The issue is that when you do that, now you're pulling this away, putting a lot of extra tension on these wires which are attached to the walls. I really want to know how many pounds we're pulling on the wall there. There's only so much a two by four can hold. Here, it's a matter of how strong is the connection of the 2x4 to the roof for whatever studs that the 2x4 studs are connected to. I'm more worried about like here, because this is a pressure point where the threads are digging into the wood. So you're saying you think that this screw point itself might fail before oh, I think, anything I think, else does? I think the screw point will fail before anything else, for sure. Uh, Our plan of attack, as I said, is we leave the top ones on, Replace one wire at a time, making it as tight as we can with like unscrewing these. Uh, I'd say yeah, just one at a time. Pull these cables until the whole system's tight. From a technical standpoint, this should be easier than dealing with poles and finding the hardware and cheaper. I feel like going the pole route would have been easier. To be honest. Just want to go home. Put that shield on my face! Put that shield on my face! Oh, shield on my face! Get the sword out of my face! <laughs>